Over the next seven minutes or so, we'll look back on a week where the Queen celebrated 70 years on the throne with a platinum jubilee, the Partygate saga rumbled on as more Tory MPs submitted letters of no confidence, and Boris sat down with Mumsnet for a heart-to-heart, plus Johnny Depp and Amber Heard got a verdict in, and we marked 100 days of the war in Ukraine. This is the Standout 7 from the Smart 7. Don't forget to hit that follow button to get your daily updates at 7am. Thursday saw the UK mark the start of a four-day celebration of the Platinum Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II. The whole royal family gathered, including Meghan and Harry, but without Prince Andrew, who apparently tested positive for Covid. There was a flyby with jets in a 70 formation, with traditional trooping of the colour and plenty of marching and parades. Her Majesty didn't attend the ceremony in St Paul's Cathedral on Friday, but appeared to be enjoying her celebrations. Piers Morgan turned up on Fox News, talking up the British ability to celebrate. Britain is not the biggest country in the world, and we've probably had better times as a, as a nation. But my God, we do pomp and pageantry really better do. than Nobody anyone, else. I think, anywhere in the world. It's a magical spectacle. Yes, it is. And there were congratulations too from world leaders, including from Joe and Jill Biden. Your Majesty, congratulations on your Platinum Jubilee. For 70 years you've been inspired people with your selfless devotion and service to the people of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. And Joe and I were so touched by the generosity and welcome you showed to us when we visited you at Windsor Castle last year. Friday marked 100 days of war in Ukraine, and when Ukrainian President Zelensky spoke to the Luxembourg Parliament, he gave a frank update on the progress of the Russian attack. As of now, nearly 20% of our territory is under the control of occupiers, almost 125,000 square kilometers. He says 243 children have been killed and 200,000 forcibly taken to Russia. He also says 100 Ukrainians are dying each day in the battle. There's also been a significant number of Ukrainian citizens forced to flee their country. Nearly 12 million Ukrainians became internally displaced people, including more than 5 million, mainly women and children, who went abroad. The U.S. has announced new sanctions and an additional weapons package worth $700 million. And NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg met with President Biden ahead of this month's NATO summit. Sweden's also pledged anti-ship missiles as part of a new military package. President Zelensky's wife, Elena Zelenska, sat down for an interview with US TV. She spoke to the Today Show and asked American audiences not to forget the people of Ukraine. I don't think that there was any reason to start this war, because that would mean the Russian propaganda is working for you. And just be careful with what you hear and don't get used to this war. Wednesday saw no let-up in the Tory party drama over Partygate. More MPs, including backbencher Simon Fell, who represents Barrow, have expressed a lack of confidence in Boris as Prime Minister. Simon described the Sue Gray report as a slap in the face, but he stopped short of saying whether or not he too had submitted a letter of no confidence. Deputy PM Dominic Raab said any law breaking by the PM was unintentional and inadvertent. Boris, as is traditional in times of great political crisis, sat down for an in-depth interview with Mumsnet. Yep, a user named Wallstone Craft wanted to know why Boris hadn't simply resigned. I just cannot see how actually it would be responsible right now, given everything that is going on, simply to abandon a, a the project on which I embarked to, I get that, to, but, to but level but up. A lot of our users will the, say the, if you've lost the trust of the people and your your government has lost the trust, then you can't possibly be an effective prime minister. And user It's Getting Weird wanted to know why having leaving drinks for work colleagues was more important than people being allowed to say their last goodbye to loved ones. What I thought I was doing uh, was simply doing what is right for a, a leader in any circumstances, and that's to thank people for, for their service. This was a time when we had to keep morale high. Okay. And the whole place was under a huge amount of pressure. We didn't even get to the question from Che Guevara's hamster. The impact of the energy crisis caused in part by the war continues to be felt in the UK as petrol prices hit a new record high. The average price is now 173p per litre for unleaded and almost 183p for diesel. Labour's shadow financial secretary James Murray says the government just hasn't done enough to tackle the twin issues of an energy crisis and a cost of living crisis. Well, I think this is really a, a national problem, obviously, and it's one which is impacted by um, inflation going up as much as it is. The fact the government hasn't had a national food strategy 
the fact the government have not got on top of supply chain issues um, and so on. So really, this is a national issue that the government needs to get a grip on. Chancellor Rishi Sunak was out and about at a lighting factory and he seems to think the best solution to the cost of living crisis is for more people to get jobs. Oh. And I think what's important to remember is actually the best way to help people long term is to get people into work and make sure that those jobs are well paid. And that's the kind of thing that we're focused on doing. Still to come on the standout seven, Cardi B's all at sea and the jury has a verdict on the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard libel trial. Right after this. Welcome back. They've almost spent more time in court than they were happily married. Now, finally, after six weeks, the second Amber Heard Johnny Depp libel trial has drawn to a close in Virginia. The jury returned a unanimous verdict in favour of Johnny Depp over his claims of libel in Amber's Washington Post article and they awarded significant damages too, but not the $50 million he was originally looking for. As against Amber Heard, we, the jury, award compensatory damages in the amount of $10 million. As against Amber Heard... We, the jury, award punitive damages in the amount of $5 million. There was a minor win for Amber. She picked up $2 million over one of her three claims. This was about remarks made by Johnny Depp's lawyer in the Daily Mail, but her original lawsuit was for $100 million. Johnny's lawyer, Camille Vasquez, was pleased with the verdict. Today's verdict confirms what we have said from the beginning, that the claims against Johnny Depp are defamatory and unsupported by any evidence. We are grateful, so grateful to the jury for their careful deliberation. The row over the Champions League final continued on Monday. It comes after Liverpool fans were blocked at turnstiles and sprayed with tear gas on their way into Saturday's game in the Stade de France. The French interior minister, Gérald Domaine, has weighed in, placing the blame on forged tickets. There was massive fraud at an industrial level and organisation of fake tickets because the pre-filtering by the Stade de France and the French Football Federation saw that 70% of tickets were fake tickets. That claim has been rubbish by fans and reporters and Boris Johnson Johnson's now called for a full inquiry. Liverpool legend Sir Kenny Dalglish was backing the fans. Well, I think the fans are totally exonerated if you read all the press reports. And I think the French authorities should be a wee bit embarrassed. She's a larger-than-life character and her Instagram is a constant source of entertainment. But even when she's on holidays, Cardi B manages to find the drama. She and husband Offset have headed off to a tropical location for a break, but it just so happened to be beside a yacht that was sinking. Cardi B streamed the whole thing and, well, they need to sign her up for some sports commentary ASAP. Oh my, it's sinking! Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Oh my God, they can't do nothing. Big boy, the big boat that can save it is gone. This has been the standout seven, the best of the week from the smart seven. We'll be back tomorrow, 7 a.m. with the Sunday seven. Have a great rest of your weekend. Written, produced, and published by Daft Dogs.